This is Carly Fries. I'm here at the ODST training facility on Reach, and I'm going to discuss the new weapon system. Lieutenant, would you mind telling me a little bit about it? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, Lieutenant Jones, UNSC, ODST, Detachment 7. Uh, we're one of the Reiki teams. BR-55, um, Charlie, you have a lot of experience with it. Yeah, yeah. See, we used to use these uh, caseless SMGs here. Man, they're really great. We used to just uh, shoot these grunts with them, but you know, you just you keep dumping into them, and they just say, stop shooting me. You know, and it's yeah. You you know, I I really don't like how they speak English. Um, I had to go to the UNSC psych because I don't know. I'm on SSRIs now. Yeah, hopefully hopefully you can get uh you get a rating here soon. But the BR uh, 55 is a nine millimeter Kurs round, um, 800 meter range, and we'll get go ahead and uh, head out to the range. We've had a lot of time on it so far. Mm -hmm. It's going to end up replacing the assault rifle, and uh, we'll likely augment it with our caseless SMGs. Although. They're a lot quieter, but uh, we'll get more into it. But I, I say we go ahead and we load this thing up and we get going. Wonderful. Let's do that. We have the BR-55 right here. Uh, we're going to have a sergeant who's going to go ahead and demonstrate it for you. Um, compared to the Caseless SMG, a lot louder. Ejects brass, and then you have a 9mm projectile. About a range of 800 meters, but we found in practice closer to 600. Would yeah. you agree with that? It's about right. Um, there's some problems with the barrel and twist rate and the uh, specifically the contour. We're talking to the UNSC about that right now, but if you um, do get your hands on this, wherever you may be, uh, just understand that the range is a little bit more limited from what the UNSC is telling you. Go ahead and take it away. Or not. Go ahead. Awesome. So now that we've done a little bit of shooting for you, you've seen a lot of shooting, we're going to go ahead and sit down with this, talk to you about our practical, ex practical experiences with it, and uh, Explain what's good about it, what's bad about it. Lieutenant Jones here talking about the BR-55. This is going to be a practical use. We've had a lot of time on this weapon with our ODST battalion and with the recce squad. You're gonna start seeing these filter down quite a bit. For those of you who have a lot of time on the MA series, whichever one it might be, you might be a, a pretty reliant on either your eyepiece for targeting or if you're newer, the Neuralink targeting systems. We would highly recommend against that. I hate to start it this way, and I know there's some controversy about talking about this, but there's a lot of electronic and Neuralink warfare going on. There's a lot of disruption systems that are in place. We highly recommend moving away from that. So to start off with, we actually have removed most, most of that circuitry that has Neuralink technology and uh, that Neuralink link with the eyepiece removed. Highly recommended if you haven't run into Covenant before, um, it can really mess up your battle tempo and your battle rhythm move away from it as a whole. Because of that, um, you'll notice that we've mounted an optic. I think that's the oddest thing that everybody sees when they see the BR-55. They ask, why is there an optic on it? The reason for that is we've gone to a more passive style of electronic warfare. This is a much harder uh, targeting system to jam. And because of that, we tend to stick with this. So it's what we're gonna recommend, but depending on your sphere, of warfare might change a little bit. This is the 2X or a bunch of different 
optics models that you can put on there. Charles, which one do you mostly use? Same one. Two X is where it's at. This is what we typically recommend. It's just enough magnification to get you to the ranges you need to get to. Again, we say 600 meters in practice. This is what we generally recommend. Lots of different mounting solutions for you out there. Battery life depends. Um, we're between, from our simulations, between five to 10 years, depending on where you got your battery from or what century it was made from. Uh, that's what we're gonna recommend. We're gonna move up to the barrel now. There's a lot of problems here, but we're gonna start with the good. The best thing about it is going to be the flash hider. There was a lot of talk amongst ourselves when we were moving over to this rifle, mostly because the caseless SMGs are so lightweight, and more importantly, there is no flash, sig flash signature, and the sound signature is quite low. With the sound detection systems currently in place with the Covenant, we haven't found that sound signature is really making much of a difference, even with our suppressors, even running subsonic or a blade of ammo. So what matters much more has been flash signature. If you'll notice that the BR-55 has approximately a three inch prong suppressor. A couple of issues there, a couple of good things. First thing that's good about it is that there is zero flash. However, when you first get these, when you pull these out of the packaging, you're gonna notice there's gonna be a lot of ring to them. You probably notice it on this one right here. We just pull this one out of the packaging. As the carbon begins to coat those tines, you're gonna have that go away. It's gonna be less of an issue. That's just something that's more gonna be at your ear than, than something that's going to actually disrupt anything as far as being spotted or being picked up by any type of other covenant weaponry or detection systems or anything along those lines. Moving down to the handguard, this is actually housing most of your Neuralink software. We removed it, so we actually shaved a solid pound and a half off this gun, bringing it down to about between the high sevens and the low eights. That's what we're gonna recommend. It also tends to make the gun a little front heavy. So by removing that circuitry, you actually lighten up the gun and the balance is much improved on it. So that is something that we're going to recommend on our end. Going up here, you do see we have vents uh, as far as keeping the weapon cool. So with the MA series of assault rifles, they really didn't get that hot when you're firing them. And that's due to the kind of the lower pressure ammunition, uh, just the way the barrel was designed. With these, the nine by five by 40 is a extremely high pressure round. And it, and it might be a little odd because it's a little bit smaller and shorter, but fatter than the typical round used by the MA series. And the reason for that is they actually use a different type of propellant that as far as I know is still classified as far as what the makeup of it is. Suffice to say, the pressures are extremely high in this weapon. We found that the heat has risen on this quite a bit more than you'd see from an assault rifle. What that means is that you have a couple different fire modes, we stick to semi-auto. You don't wanna overheat this gun too much, mostly for signature detection, because as you know, there are a lot of thermal imaging software that's being used by Covenant right now. So just make sure you're being careful out there. We have our optic rail going up to here, where we talked a little bit about that. Depending on which optic you have integrated, you have a couple different controls that you can run. For a lot of the variables, um, you have your switches to bring it from short power to far power or from uh, passive aiming over to thermal. Again, just stay, stick to the passive aiming. We don't recommend using the thermal for um, those electronic warfare problems. At the back, we do have a display screen that will give you your round count. It's pretty good, it's pretty reliable in our opinion. There are There have been issues with the way the magazines are wired up to that display where you can run into some some problems where it's not gonna properly read. In practice, we haven't been running the display on, and the reason for that is just more light. Uh, that's something we're trying to get rid of as much as possible. A lot of the armor suits, a lot of the current technologies that we're running have lights. We've been trying to kill those as much as possible. So that starts with our display screen. That's something I'm going to recommend. You can run it on if you really want to, but other than that, pop that mag out, take a look at your magazine, see how many you got in there. Moving back, we do have a charging handle right here. So in practice, when, we're, when we are reloading, we're going to insert the magazine, and then that charging handle is gonna be pulled back. Compared to some weapons that you might've had time on before, there's no bolt hold open on this guy. And the reason for that is they don't want any type of grit, grime, dirt, covenant blood, whatever, getting in here when you're operating it. So that's why you don't have that bolt hold open. So as soon as you get that mag in, you're just gonna run that charging handle every time. And it's pretty smooth. You can see right here, you can see the entire op rod right there moving. It's pretty robust, well coated. We haven't had any corrosion issues and it's gone close to about 60,000 rounds so far without any issues. So it's something we're gonna recommend 
Um, no upgrades on uh, on UNSC side. Going over, controls, probably one of the worst design controls I've ever seen on any rifle. We have a safety right here. We actually haven't even been running that at all because it is so small that in practice and stiff that it's extremely hard to actuate on the fly. So if we have to have this in a position where it's ready to fire, we typically are running mag in with the chamber empty. And if we have to, we're just racking that charging handle and going into combat at that point, rather than having that round in the chamber with the safety on or just run a cowboy style, old style, and uh, have that round in the chamber just ready to go. Grip is awesome. If you got some really beefy hands, you might have some, some issues kind of getting your hand in there. Otherwise, great. Now the trigger is really incredible. Okay, feeling the trigger right there. We got about a millimeter maybe of play. We hit our wall. We have maybe a two pound let off from the reset. Maybe a three, maybe three millimeters forward. And that's about a half pound. For a marksman's rifle, this is incredible. Hey Charles, come on in here. What's the longest shot you made with this guy? I've hit 900 meters. How? With this guy. Well, one, I use the optic and two, I just hate covenant. You got it. Our cheek piece is a molded composite polymer. It's pretty soft. You put your face up against it. I like it quite a bit. It's a really good cheek weld. If you're not familiar with that, it's putting your cheek at the correct height to look through the optic and it's perfect for us. So you don't need any type of riser or nothing like that when it comes to this rifle. Butt sock is uh, not adjustable. So this is something we've all run into. You might run into some problems with your armor. You're gonna have to work around it, get used to it. The magazines are definitely an issue. So the problem is this little lip right here, they wanna get caught up. So you have to make sure that you apply forward pressure to make sure that it doesn't get caught on that little square right there. So as you can see, this one's working pretty good, but it can get caught right there and then you're not gonna get that magazine seated. So make sure you give that kind of a forward push when you're loading, make sure that's seated, pull on it a little bit, make sure it's fully seated before you start getting ready to go. And the magazine release is right here. That will pop it out. It's not going to drop free. So it's not a, it's not a perfect system, but it's pretty good in my opinion. I will say for the size of the round, the 9.5 by 40, that we have an extremely powerful cartridge. It's been performing extremely well. I think with some heavier barrel upgrades, maybe changing up the twist rate to being a little bit slower, we're gonna have an excellent weapon system overall, but I like where this is going. Um, in our experience, you're, it's about a one to two shots through grunt and a split lip. If you can get within shield range, yeah, as long as you put one through, it's done, he's down. Uh, I really appreciate the amount of power that this brings to us. I've been uh, pretty openly critical of the assault rifle in the past, and um, I'm happy with the changes that have been made within the UNSC to bring the BR-55 to the fleet. So. As this comes out to you guys, check it out, try it out, let us know what you think. And uh, it's always good having Carly out here. Hey, sir, we got a covenant headed our way. Something we can't handle. Okay, guys, we always try to bring you a fun video on April Fools. We're roughly on April Fools, so let's talk a little bit about it. This has been a project we've been working on for about, what, three years now, Charles? 900 meters. <laughs> so uh, we have to give a big shout out to the guy who designed this rifle, he's an engineer and he literally made a working BR-55 battle rifle. It's chambered in 5.56. Uh, the operating mechanism, all that stuff, if you go to his channel, he talks a lot about the manufacturing process. I'm not gonna steal his thunder when it comes to that, but it is actually seriously cool. Micah, how cool is it? The coolest Halo April Fool's prop <laughs> we've ever had. How good it shoots is actually incredible. It's actually super Making shoots. actually better guns than some <laughs> manufacturers. It's like yes. this engineer out here making a better gun than real gun manufacturers. It's all custom, cost this guy like $60,000 to make. And on top of that, the magazines are obviously 10 round 5.56 magazines, but they have a little chip in them. So it actually reads the pressure from the magazine, Bluetooth it up to the computer screen right here, and the computer screen gives you a readout of how many rounds you actually have. Now, it fudges it to 36 like in the video game, so it goes down by six every shot, but I thought it was really cool. I did too. He I went he went dummy hard on this thing. Trigger is super nice. I, I can't say enough good things about this. He spent a dummy amount of money. We have like the coolest prop gun ever, and we're just the stupid little YouTube <laughs> To the channel. So if you want to check him out, let me go ahead and pull his uh, stuff up, have it on the screen. So it's going to be Brian and his YouTube channel is B Squared Manufacturing. Yep. 
His name is Brian B Squared Manufacturing. Please go check him out. Give him a follow and tell him thank you for lending us this rifle. Um, it was super kind of him. He's been working on this for three years and we can't thank him enough for letting us do this and we'll be able to bring you something cool. Now for our costumes right here, come on in Hastings. All right, boss, what do you want to tell everybody? Uh, I'm Larry of Ultra Productions. You can find me on most socials under that name. I and my friend Daryl of All for 3D, we make these costumes. Uh, we built them all up from scratch, imported the models from the Reach game, turned them into silicone molds and cast most of them in rubber. We do sell them. They are a little expensive, so if it's a deterrent, I wouldn't recommend reaching out unless How you're How much serious. could I do for 100 bucks? You couldn't. <laughs> you can get this piece right here. You, you can get consolidation. <laughs> okay. I'll talk to you about it. Perfect. Um, we can't thank you enough, man, for bringing out the costumes and everything. Brian was going to come out here, but he's an actual engineer, so he has a lot of stuff to do. Mm. But all these people came together. Uh, Carly, come on in here. All right, get out. Get out for a second. Yeah, get out. I'm out. Carly, what, what do you want to tell us about yourself? I'm a gun bunny, and I, <laughs> I don't know anything about guns, really. <laughs> That's not true. You worked at you worked at for tons of gun gun. She actually designed all of her logos for Onward Research. Yeah, I did. Close friend of my wife, and uh, yeah, thank you for coming out and being a. Uh, but being, not Mike. Only only his wife. <laughs> no, oh, no, yeah. that's true. That's that's very true. And then of course we have Charles here. Right. <laughs> Thanks for uh, showing up, dude. Yeah, no problem. It was a uh, rough rough couple days. I I was dead for a while last night. Yeah, that was a lot of filming. Yeah. Hey, Charles, go grab the camera so Mike can hop in. <laughs> Filmer, <laughs> slipped, extraordinaire. Jeez. What do you got to say about this project, dude? Uh, I filmed and edited it in 24 hours. That is actually true. <laughs> so. We had a video releasing, and I was like, hey, can I get a video clip? And he sent me a clip of this instead. Yeah, and I was like, all actually, those, just keep doing all that. All those special effects, all the audio, everything was filmed the night of and edited the next morning. So Wild work. It was, it was a lot of fun, time? though. What time? Let him know. Just what time? Yeah, what I time got home at like 1 a.m. I had it done by like noon the next day. <laughs> awesome. Anyhow, so. guys, we, we try to bring you something fun every April Fool's. Hope you guys had a good time watching this one. We always, we're going to keep having fun. So stay tuned. More serious content coming in the future. And dad advice for you, it's okay to have fun. Okay, we're done.